everybody, and welcome to UC Tech Chat, where we discuss business technology, unified communications, and more for small and medium businesses. I am your host, Brian Ferguson. And I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. Thank you for joining us. So today, Jason and I will be giving you a primer of some really cool technology that has hit the scene. It's called Internet of Things, and we'll be discussing that and also what m to m means. Later, we'll check with Julie Webb as she answers a question from Julie's inbox related to machine-to-machine -to -machine technology. Then we'll wrap up the show with the best tech cities, so let's get started. Okay, great. So first, a little background. Uh, the Internet of Things is the network of physical objects or things embedded with sensors that exchanges data with other connected devices without requiring human-to-human -human or human-to-computer interaction. A thing in the Internet of Things can be a person, an animal, an automobile, or any natural or man-made object. Basically, anything that can be assigned an IP address and has the ability to transfer data over a network can be a thing. So before we start thinking about uh, Terminator-style machines taking over the world, uh, that's really not what it is. Consider that there's literally too much data uh, around the world for humans to consume. So it's much more efficient for technology to talk to each other so that that data can be processed. So far, the Internet of Things has been most closely associated with machine-to-machine -machine or M2M -M communication in the manufacturing and utilities industries. Products built with M2M -M communication capabilities are often referred to as being smart. IoT goes well beyond M2M. -M. Uh, we'll go through several examples of how IoT can benefit different industries out there. Environmental monitoring applications of IoT typically utilize sensors to assist in environmental protection by monitoring. So there's also infrastructure management for things like bridges and railroad tracks, on and offshore uh, wind farms are key applications of Internet of Things. Manufacturing of new products, dynamic response to product demands, and real-time optimization of product and supply chain networks are great examples of IoT. So IoT devices will be integrated into all forms of energy consuming devices like switches and power outlets um, and be able to communicate directly with the utility company to help balance power consumption. Medical and healthcare systems can utilize IoT for remote health monitoring and emergency notification systems. So another great example is home automation systems. The transportation industry can utilize IoT for inter- and intravehicular communication. So hopefully now you understand a little bit more about what Internet of Things is and how it really benefits different technologies and industries out there. So if you have anything further to add or questions to ask about Internet of Things, let us know at hashtag UC Tech Chat. So now let's turn it over to our favorite VoIP expert, Julie Webb, as she answers a question on Julie's inbox. Julie? Thanks, Brian and Jason. Today's question comes from Andy, who lives in Savannah, Georgia. And Andy is asking, why should I pay attention to IoT and M2M technologies? Thanks for the question, Andy. According to Markets and Markets Market Report, IoT and M2M communications are increasing the interconnectivity between objects and devices. It is expected that by 2020, interconnectivity among devices will be 31 billion. Great question, Andy. And if you have a question for us, please send it to us at hashtag UC Tech Chat, and we'd be happy to answer it here on the show or via Twitter. Back to you, Brian and Jason. Thank you, Julie. So recently, Forbes released a list of the top five cities that are looking to replace Silicon Valley as the top tech hub. These cities have the following characteristics. They have relatively low housing costs, low unemployment, the uh, median salary for tech jobs outranks the median salary of the rest of the workforce. They have the presence of other tech companies, and they have venture capitalist firms that are looking to spend money to spawn new businesses. First on the list, but in fifth place, is Austin, Texas, arguably the most attractive of all these tech cities. The city has a young, educated population and a large venture capitalist presence, along with a blossoming uh, restaurant and music scene. Next, we have Dallas known as the location of Texas Instruments and home to tech and sports mogul Mark Cuban of Shark Tank, Dallas has its share of fast-growing VC-funded companies as well as some great barbecue. Also, about 33 Dallas-based tech companies have been acquired since 2012. Just like Texas, go big or go home. Next is Seattle, Washington. When you think of this city, you automatically think of rain, great coffee, and tech titans Microsoft and Amazon. 
With housing prices still more affordable than the Bay Area, Seattle definitely deserves a spot on the list. So in second place is Chicago, one of the country's major core real estate markets. Chicago ranks second in growth of tech jobs amongst the country's most populous cities. Their pizza ranks number one on several lists out there, I'm sure. Finally, we have Miami, Florida. Both the weather and the tech scene are hot in this famous, famous beach city. If the tech scene can be defined by potential, the best description of Miami's real estate market is resurgent. So another city that's not on the list that should be and it's near and dear to our hearts is Digium Zone, Huntsville, Alabama, which was named by Forbes as the number one city in, in the country for engineers. Due to the low cost of living and abundance of engineering jobs, the city's economic development is booming and continues to attract people from all over the world. If it were included on this list, it would have also had the lowest cost of living by far. So let us know your favorite tech city at hashtag UC Tech Chat. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you on the next episode.